Hey yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Chad. This is going to be another movie review and this is going to be about the movie Barbie. So I don't know about any of y'all, but I wanted to go see Barbie. I really did. Um, so I went and saw it with my girl. Um, it's directed by Greta Gerwig. And just off rip, if you're going into this Barbie movie thinking that, oh, I'm going to be watching, you know, a really kitty, really girly movie. No, that is not what you think at all. This Barbie movie was completely different than what I thought it was going to be. It had a bunch of everything in it. Um, I honestly don't even think it was for kids. I think this is more so for like girls who grew up, you know, in the 90s who are now adults and used to play with Barbies and are now adults. And then it, excuse me, it also, um, like I said, is for, it's really for girls who grew up in the 90s, who used to play with Barbies, who now became adults. And it's for dudes at the same time because of Ken, you know, like the whole movie is for both, you know, men and women. I wouldn't say, oh, just women go see or nothing like that. Like you'll be very surprised when you go to the theater um, and the movie starts. And you're like, whoa, this isn't what I expected. Um, so I kind of consider this movie like a adult movie and cater to, you know, both men and women because it is relatable, but you didn't really have to grow up playing with Barbies, but I don't think it's like for little kids to go see. Um, but in this movie, you know, Margot Robbie was Barbie and Ryan Gosling was Ken, and they definitely shine throughout this entire movie. Like, their performance was top tier, you know, Barbie, we mainly focused on Margot Ruby as Barbie in the beginning, in the beginning to the middle of the movie. And then basically, um, it went to Ryan Gosling being like the star, um, with the end of the movie. So it's Margot Ruby in the beginning, then the middle was just like a switch over to basically, um, Ken and Ryan Gosling. Um, this movie had a very good storyline showing how like Barbie, you know, starts her day. It was kind of weird because I never expected a movie, a live action movie of Barbie to show like how girls pretend to use Barbie. Like Barbie will wake up in the morning, get out of bed, go down the steps, fix herself, um, take a shower with no water running, fix herself breakfast, fake pour like some milk into a cup, get some light. You know, like fake looking food that's like waffles and be like, mm, hey, go on top of her house and just float into her car and then drive her like plastic car around, which is really cool because, you know, I thought they're going to show Barbie actually drinking food, eating water, things like that. But they didn't. You know, she was living like a Barbie in what they called in the movie Barbie land. Um, the story shows Barbie, you know, she's going through her regular day to day routine and then out of nowhere, she's basically like, you guys ever think about death? And I'm like, death? And everybody's looking and you could tell like, they're like, what? Barbie's malfunctioning because it's not the first time that a Barbie has actually malfunctioned. Um, but you could basically tell, you know, something's going on with Barbie. And so basically the movie is Barbie trying to figure out why am I changing? What's going on? And she eventually finds out from another Barbie that was malfunctioning at one point who they call Weird Barbie, which is, um, well, they call her Weird Barbie. And the reason behind why Barbie's malfunction is because the girls who are using the Barbies in the real world were affecting how Barbie was in the fake world. So... Barbie was supposed to be like a perfect Barbie. You know, she's supposed to be pretty. She's supposed to never have her outfits messed up, yada, yada. But the character who was playing, you know, the girl using the Barbie in real life has started imagining Barbie as like depressed, thinking about death. Um, she started thinking about Barbie with cellulite, gaining weight. And of course, for weird Barbie, it was like, you know, the people who were playing with that Barbie doll were drawing on the face of the Barbie, putting the hair crazy doing whatever with the legs and so it reflected in Barbie land with what was going on and what they kept showing throughout the movie was that in Barbie land is ran by Barbie 
And Ken is like an afterthought in Barbie Land. So women run everything in Barbie Land. It's a complete woman-dominated society. And Ken's are like basically just like second thoughts. Like they don't get no respect really, if we being honest. I mean they do, but it's kind of just like, nah, Ken, we don't like you. And the only thing Ken does in the beginning is just confess his love for Barbie. She shoots him down. He just wants a little time with Barbie, but he kind of doesn't actually get it. So when Barbie started having when Barbie started having her issue um with you know thinking about death and everything, the weird Barbie told her, you gotta go to the real world, find who's doing this to you, and everything could be better. Um and when her and Ken got to the real world, Ken realized like it's different. Like men run everything here in the real world, whereas in the other world, Barbie runs everything. So like why Barbie's trying to, you know, figure out what's going on and you're, you know, seeing who the character is that's messing with her and you know everything like that. Ken's up here taking notes. He's like, men have horses. He loves horses. Men have horses and men run things and do this and that. And so Ken goes back to Barbie land before Barbie gets back and tells everybody. And so a big plot point of the movie, you know, near the second half is basically Ken has brought everything that the real world was doing back to Barbie land. So like when Barbie eventually gets to Barbie land, they keep talking about, and she realized everything's changed. The women Barbies are now like serving the Ken Barbies because it's like all different races of the Kens. They could be anybody. It's just the men inside Barbie land. So like Ken, he had his Mojo Dojo Casa house and he's like punching, punching bags and the women are bringing food out and like, oh, Ken. And, you know, a man's now running the Supreme Court that Barbie's had. And they're like, I don't know why I was doing that before. I love not having to think. And it's like basically showing, you know, the patriarchy or whatever they want to call it. And patriarchy was used so much in this movie. This movie, I would say, is a woke movie, but it's not like the type of woke where you're like, I'm never going to spend my money to do this again. It wasn't that bad type of woke. It was in terms of showing like the difference between men and women and what happens when women run a society, what happens when men run a society. And if you watch the movie, you definitely understand what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm a person who noticed the woke stuff. But I was never in my time being like, uh, here we go again with this woke stuff. It was just kind of like when Ken brought the ideas over to the Barbie land, you know, the women Barbies enjoyed, like, not running everything. Like, kind of really showing, like, the truth in it all. Like, the women realized they didn't want to run everything. The men realized... They could run stuff. They're better than just being, you know, simps to Barbie. And that was like a big plot near the second half of the movie. And in the second half of the movie, like I said, it kind of took the focus off Barbie and put it more so on Ken. And that's where Ryan Gosling character really shined in the second half of the movie. It really felt like a parallel. Like first half is about Barbie. Second half is about Ken. And they all coming together to make a one cohesive story. Um... Like I said, Ken had the Mojo Dojo Casa House, which, you know, when he came out with that in Barbie Land, then in the real world, Mattel, the Barbie company, which that's when they introduced Will Ferrell's character. He was like the CEO of Mattel, which created Barbie. They started coming out with Mojo Dojo Casa Houses. And you realize that everything that happens in Barbie Land is what happens in the real world. So when the balances are off. You know, it imbalances the real world. And that's kind of a another plot point that Will Ferrell character came in too. Was like, we can't mess up this balance because of, you know, everything that's happening. Um, This definitely felt like a movie to empower women. They were talking about feminism. feminism but this also was a movie to empower men. Um, But this is also another movie that was basically trying to show like, you know... In the real world, if it affects Barbie land, like I said, the lady was kind of, you know, thinking about death and think about how she's maybe getting bigger and developing cellulite. And Barbie basically realized, like, going through trying to save, you know, the woman, like, it's okay not to be perfect. It's okay to have flaws. At the end of the day, you're still Barbie. You, you, You know, you're still you. You can still be you. You know, it's a normal human experience. Barbie started to learn instead of just being inanimate and just 
being Barbie, you know, she now had emotions. She now knew what it felt like to be others, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and it definitely did make the movie kind of start getting a little sad. Like you kind of felt like a little bad for Barbie. Yeah, you felt good for her in some parts, but you know, they wrapped it all together nicely where it was like, okay, you know, I definitely see what you guys are talking about here. I definitely see what you guys are doing. You're empowering women, but you're also empowering men. Because at the end, you know, Barbie Land returned back to Barbie Land, but they were also like, Barbie Land doesn't have to go back to exactly Barbie Land. Like, Ken doesn't have to feel like he has to just serve Barbie. Ken is Ken, which he realized after going to the real world and coming back. Like, he can do what he wants to do. And if Barbie wants to, you know, have him around, she can have him around if he wants to be around. And Barbie doesn't have to just, you know, do whatever to Ken. You know, she can treat Ken. Ken's can... You know, be up front and Barbies can, you know, if they don't want to think, they can serve Ken or whatever they want to do. Like, it's all okay. It's just be you. That's basically like what the whole message was. Just be you. Just be Ken. Just be Barbie. And you'll be straight. You know what I mean? You can you can enjoy yourself without having to pander to the other or anything like that. Um, but you guys can both coexist together and do your own thing all around. I thought that, you know, like I said, I saw Barbie and Oppenheimer same weekend. I saw Oppenheimer in the in the day, like one o'clock. And then at 930 at night, I went and saw Barbie. And I don't think there's any other way to do it. Like, if you didn't do it like that, then you didn't really do it like that. Like, why would you watch it two different days? Come on. Come on. It's it's Barbenheimer or whatever they want to call it. Um, but I would say Barbie was a solid movie. I definitely enjoyed it. Like I said, if you're like, well, I'm going to take my kids to see this because it was definitely some more mature type of content in there. They were talking about vaginas and penis and genitals and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say it was exactly for kids, but, you know, to each their own. But if I had to say a rating that I would give Barbie, I would say Barbie was a solid eight or eight and a half out of ten. Like I said, I definitely enjoyed it. I don't feel like I wasted any of my money. I don't feel like it was too woke where I didn't want to watch it. I was just like, you know, this was a pretty good movie. It made you think, you know, you felt sad, felt bad for the characters at some point. You felt uplifted by the characters. It had some humor and comedy in it. And Margot Robbie and, you know, Ryan Gosling did a very good job with it. But anyways, man, that's my take on Barbie. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, it's been your boy Chad. I'm out. Peace.